Greetings, friends and brethren around the world. It has been a bit over three months of this uh, madness and sadness in Ukraine. Three months of devastation, three months of refugee crisis, three months of economic shockwaves that have affected the whole world. And you're probably wondering when in the world this is going to end. Well, it seems to be coming to an end well, it seemed perhaps <laughs> a month ago, but uh, nowadays we can see uh, more concrete results of this conflict. Now, my name is Aleksandr Velic. I live in Serbia, which gives me a very opportune moment to give you the latest update because Serbia is in friendly terms with both countries, with both Russia and with Ukraine. With Ukraine, I need to remind you that Ukraine is one of the countries that have not recognized self-proclaimed so-called state of Kosovo, which is a historical Serbian territory, and therefore Serbia re re remains in very good terms with, with Ukraine. At the same time, Serbia has been traditional friend of Russia, so therefore my advantage and advantage of all of us here is that we get news from both sides, both from Russians and the Ukrainians, and therefore I can then provide you with uh, the latest, the latest news from both sides. Uh, whether that's the case, whether you can re receive both sides in your where you are, I don't know. Perhaps you're able to, you know, check some various uh, websites or, or or other sources. But in any case. I've been trying to give you at least what are the uh, highlights of uh, the latest development as far as the conflict in, 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 in Ukraine is going on. I need to remind you that the conflict began because supposedly the Russian populated area of two areas, Lugansk and Donetsk, both called Donbas, the intelligence, Donbas intelligence, and Donbas is populated by the ethnic Russians, by the way. Donbas intelligence found out that the Ukrainians were going to launch an offensive uh, in March with the goal to ethnically cleanse both those areas of ethnic Russians. Uh, I haven't seen that uh, document. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that was uh, at least uh, one of the... It was used as a pretext for the... Uh, Russian onslaught on Ukraine. The latest one, the latest news that we have received these days is that the another region of Ukraine has declared, has uh, at least vow vowed or has expressed its desire to join Russia is the Zaporozhye area. The Zaporozhye area, as it claims, is historical Russian territory as well, uh, just like any other territories that were given to Ukraine by the communists, Zaporozhye was also given to the Ukraine uh, because of the uh, decision of the communist authorities back in those days. So, now we have another area after uh, after, after the uh, Kherson area, now we have another area that wants to remain or join or uh, become part of the Russian Federation. In fact, they've taken all the practical steps to that end. Uh, they've switched over to the uh, Russian uh, country code when it comes to telephone lines. So they're using a Russian country code. They've also switched to the Moscow time zone. They've also wowed that they will not be using the daylight saving uh, time as has been the practice of Ukraine when they were under the Ukrainian control. They have also, uh, Zaporozhye has, has announced the other day that they've returned the old emblem of their, of their region. The old emblem from the days of the past when they were part of the Russian Federation or the Great Russia. So therefore you can see that after Kherson now another region wants to join Russian territory, Russian territory and become part of Russia. This was the case also with, 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 with Crimea. There was a referendum held in Crimea and overwhelming majority of Crimean population, which is, of, of course, again, ethnic Russians, made up mostly of ethnic Russians. The overwhelming majority voted to 
uh, return to Russia. We cannot say to join Russia, annex Russia. Those are the wrong terms because Crimea was never Ukrainian territory. It was always Russian territory until the communists, for whatever reason, decided, well, the reason mostly was, well, the hegemony. Oh, there will be Russian hegemony. So they, to combat so-called Russian hegemony, they decided to basically take various parts of the Russian territory populated by the ethnic Russians and join them to Ukraine or other areas, you see. And now it seems that Russia has had enough of this and Russia seems to be now basically regaining those territories. When I say territories, I also mean the Transnistria. Transnistria is also a region populated by ethnic Russians. It's part of Moldova right now, or Moldavia. And it's very likely, it is my guess, uh, I haven't heard any official statements from the Russian side, but I, it's my guess that it would, that region would also be targeted by the Russians and the Russian Federation so that those people will also be able to join, again, uh, uh, their historical motherland, Russia. The Russians have also, the Ukrainians have expressed their desire. The, 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 the Ukrainian president said that he would, he, he is not really willing to negotiate with Russians, but he realizes that, as he said, that will be the only way to end this war. At the same time, the other day he expressed his opinion that uh, a direct talk between him and the Russian president would most likely bring an end to this conflict. However, the Russia, Russians have made conditions that, of course, Ukrainians cannot accept. The Russians have said that the uh, the areas uh, populated by ethnic Russians, Donbass area, Lugansk and Donetsk, will never again return under the control of Kiev, under the control of the Ukrainian central government. It has been reported that 95% of the Lugansk area has been now completely cleansed from the Ukrainian forces. And there is, uh, as you have probably heard on the audio news, I guess your Western media outlets have reported that uh, there has been an onslaught of the Russians against several towns and areas in Donbas region. According to what we have heard so far, Russian chief of staff announced that sooner rather than later, uh, with this kind of offensive, very soon various Ukrainian territory, uh, Ukrainian forces, I'm sorry, Ukrainian territories are territories, but Ukrainian uh, so, uh, force, forces, Ukrainian military, will either be expelled completely or will find themselves being beleaguered by the Russian forces. Uh, that will be the same scenario that happened with the city of Mariupol, the city that I'm sure that you have well remembered from my reports earlier. The city of Mariupol, that, by the way, has fallen completely into the, into the Russian hands. That was something that was expected. And from the very beginning of this conflict, you might remember, dear friends, and brethren around the world, that I told you that Mariupol will certainly be, be under the Russian control. I told you it was a strategic port. It was a land corridor uh, connecting this Donbass area with Crimea, and I told you that Russians, by all means, will have to take that city and conquer it. By the way, that city was part of the Donbas area anyway. It was, it is a Russian-speaking city. Uh, the population was basically equal. You know, uh, the, the the same number, almost the same number of Ukrainians and Russians lived in that city, with a large Greek community and some other minorities like Belarus, Jews, Bulgarians, etc. But the um, number of uh, Ukrainians and Russians was basically equal. The Ukrainians, in fact, had a slight majority. But nevertheless, the city itself uh, was a Russian-speaking city. <coughs> and it, is, it was part of the Donbas, which is basically populated mostly by the ethnic Russians. So therefore, as I've told you, the city of Mariupol completely now fell under the Russian control. Uh, you might remember that there was there were Ukrainian forces, the Azov, the infamous Azov battalion, still holding out in a Mariupol steel plant, holding out and supposedly defending something that was indefensible anyway. From the very start of this war, brethren and friends, I told you that Mariupol would be in Russian hands, and there was no way that the Ukrainians could 
maintain control over that city because they were completely beleaguered by the Russian forces, completely. The Russian forces were controlling any 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 convoys, any humanitarian aid, anything that could come get in or get out of the town. So uh, the Ukrainian forces had no chance. By the way, those Ukrainian forces, the Azov Battalion, are much hated by many of the Mariupol residents because of their neo-Nazi ideology that is well known, I think, now around the world. So they found, finally, after the street battles, they withdrew to that steel plant. In steel plant, of course, the Russians launched an offensive. First, they called them, you know, to lay down arms. They guaranteed them that they will be alive. But they supposedly continued to defend whatever was defending. <laughs> they were defending. I don't know what were they defending anyway, because the city itself was already in Russian control. So they could only defend the steel plant. But they were completely blockaded blocked in that steel plant so you know they were dying there the 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 wounded you know soldiers were dying there there were civilians there i mean basically cut off from any supplies and i don't know what they were defending anyway i mean it's, it's, it's such an absurd what happened with what was going on with mariupol especially on the ukrainian side it's an absurd because from the very start of the war i kept telling you there is no way that ukrainians could retain control over mariupol there was no way it was so obvious. It was, to any common sense person, it was so obvious. But obviously, in the war, the common sense seems, to, and the truth seems to be the first, <laughs> uh, the first victim and the, um, or, or, or the first uh, casualty. And then uh, the common sense also seems to be the, the, the second casualty. So anyway, the uh, Azov plant, basically, uh, the remaining Ukrainian forces, Ukrainian government forces, Azov battalion, basically had to surrender. And now the city of Mariupol is completely under the Russian control. Russians have taken the steps to clear up the uh, sea mines and land mines, uh, as to allow so to allow the Mariupol port to be functional again. So the other day they announced that they have cleared up completely sea land mines, and now they would open up those ports, uh, including Nikolaev, uh, the port of Odessa, and the port of Mariupol for so-called humanitarian evacuation, because there were various international ships that were caught up, stranded in those uh, ports because of this war. But now the Russians have now announced that uh, they will be opening the humanitarian uh, corridors by the sea so that all those ships could uh, leave the ports and return to their countries. Uh, The Russians have have also expressed their... Uh, a willingness to uh, keep those ports open for the export of the Ukrainian wheat because, as you know, Ukrainian wheat, as well as Russian wheat, is one of the main staples in various African countries. Uh, the main export uh, that Ukrainians have, basically one of the main export, uh, one of the greatest trade that they, that they they've achieved with the world was their wheat because it's a breadbasket. It was the breadbasket of the, of the former Soviet, U- Soviet Union. And therefore, there was there were concerns that because of lack of possibility to export the the, 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 the wheat, that various people, various countries may face even hunger, hunger and starvation. And therefore, the Russians have expressed their desire to open up those ports for the trade. Of course, upon the condition that the international community would suspend or abolish the uh, various sanctions that they have imposed on the Russian economy. However, the Russian economy is still doing well. The Russian currency is not failing at all. The Russian currency is doing very well against euro and against dollar. So, uh, at least in this financial sector, as far as far as I can I can discern, they uh, the sanctions by the European Union mostly had no effect. The only country in Europe that has not imposed sanction against Russia is is Serbia. So that's why, again, as I say, there is this advantage that we can get uh, the the fresh news, we can get updates from both sides and follow what is is going on on both sides. There was this uh, forum held in Davos in, uh, in Switzerland, as you know, and the Ukrainian foreign minister basically accused NATO of doing nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, so, uh, 
he also said that the European Union was taking revolutionary decisions to help Ukraine. And that was the, he said that the Ukrainian foreign minister, he said that at the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland. Now, uh, the fight has intensified in Donbass area, as I've already mentioned that to you. There was reports that 95% of the Lugansk area has com- been completely uh, liberated, shall we say, uh, or, or cleansed from the Ukrainian forces anyway. And that was the goal from the very start. Basically, the goal was by the, from the Russians to extract those two territories, Lugansk and Donetsk, extract them from Ukraine and put them under the Russian control. Uh, the Russian parliament on Wednesday passed a bill uh, which removed age limits for professional soldiers joining the military. So, in that way, they kind of expanded their recruitment. At the same time, Ukraine has been getting some help from the Western countries in terms of arms. So Ukrainians are trying to kind of resist in Donbas. They're trying to resist the Russian offensive, but uh, it seems very unlikely that they'll, be al- that they'll be able to hold out for much longer. Also, the uh, Russian parliament gave approval for a bill that would allow the government to appoint new management for foreign companies that pulled out of Russia after Russian invasion to Ukraine. Uh, at the same time, Russians have fast-tracked the uh, uh, those who want to have Russian nationality, Russian citizenship. Uh, now they have fast-tracked it for those people in the uh, areas which are now under Russian control, which is Aporozhye area, Donbas area, and uh, the uh, Kherson area. The fighting has very is very intense in Donbas. Both sides, of course, accuse one another. Uh, the Ukrainian president says that several cities are now basically ashes in Donbas. At the same time, Russians have claimed that Ukrainians bombed here and there various cities, as they were doing it even prior to the Russian offensive, and that the, that's the reason why the Russians Russians intervened. So the uh, you know there have been acu- accusations of both uh, from both sides about about this. Um, what else is what else is now uh, basically important to tell you? Well. At this World Economic Forum in Davos, there were several countries, we don't know which ones, that suggested to Ukraine that they should return to the peace talks to to the truce. But the Ukrainians, of course, are reluctant to do that because they know that the Russians will not now ever, they will never, just like with Crimea, after the following the referendum of the Crimean citizens, the, the Ukrainians are well aware that the Donbas area will never again return to Ukraine. The Russians will not allow it. At the same time, Moldavians, of course, fear that Russians will intervene with Transnistria and and and, and keep that keep that for, uh, keep that territory as well. And rightly so, they're 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 you know they're rightly uh, uh, afraid. So uh, Ukraine kind of reacted angrily at the uh, suggestion of various politicians that they may that they should return to the truce or peace negotiations because the economic consequences of all of this are being felt now in various parts of Europe and the world the other day the french government announced that the uh, citizens will be having those who are eligible will have will have eligibility to have vouchers food vouchers vouchers to buy food v- vouchers that will be values of uh, 10 euros 20 euros 5 euros and 30 euros so it seems there is a food shortage of some kind in france and there is a fear now around the world that if this conflict can cons- you know can continues it would again push up the prices gas prices the gas prices automatically entail that 
inflation and 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 prices of other things, products and 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 and, and services to rise up, and therefore uh, there was this urging of various leaders to the Ukrainian president that he should restart again negotiating for peace because the consequences are unforeseeable in a sense. He's not happy about those uh, uh, urgings, he's not happy about those suggestions, but so be it. So dear friends, in summary, there is there are intense fightings in uh, Donbass area. 95% of Lugansk has been completely cleansed from the Ukrainian government forces. The city of Mariupol is completely under the Russian ha- in, in Russian hands. Uh, Russians will be opening humanitarian corridors in Odessa, Nikolaev, Mariupol and other, other port cities for all those ships that might have been stranded due to this conflict. The Zaporozhye area after the Kherson Erson area is the second area that expressed its desire to join the Russian Federation and never they vowed never again to return to the uh, Ukrainian control. Uh, Zaporozhye area and Kherson area have already they have already uh, uh, switched over to the uh, Russian country code. Uh, there is a new mobile provider that has been active now, and the people are switching over in those areas to that Russian mobile provider. The uh, region of Zaporozhye. Ex- announced that they returned their emblem uh, they returned the old emblem that they were using when they were once part of Russia and the uh, Kherson area again wants to wants to join Russia as well so uh, we're seeing these developments but however the peace negotiations are yet to be held however in spite of all of this uh, 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 we still see intense battles in the area of Donbas, but the Russians are uh, superior militarily, superior to Ukrainians, so it is common sense to expect that they would really completely take control over the entire Donbas area, just like they've taken control under the, they've taken control of Mariupol. The Russians, the chief of staff has already warned that in several days if these things continue various Ukrainian government forces in Donbas will face the fact that they'll be completely besieged by the Russian forces if they don't get expelled in the meantime well friends I thought this would be the most important points that I need to bring to you at this time so that you would be aware of uh, what's going on on both sides. Again, my unique position to be in a country that is on friendly terms with both countries has given me this unique opportunity to give you balanced updates from both sides so that you can uh, be properly informed. Until the next time, I'm Alexander Vedic and I will be talking to you again, hopefully, next time when I address you, this conflict would be over.